Over these last few weeks, we've been thinking about life in the coronavirus crisis, and we've been doing that by reference to the life and ministry of Jesus. And over Easter, the framework of death and resurrection has been crucial to our thinking. And now we approach Ascension Day on Thursday. In the arc of Jesus' ministry, he comes from heaven. He's born to Mary, the incarnation. He's put to death on the cross, the crucifixion. Then, of course, we've been celebrating his resurrection. Then after 40 days, there's his ascension back into the heavenly realm where he rules until his return. And the ascension's an important part of that trajectory of ministry and probably one that's not emphasised enough. In the church calendar, Ascension Day always falls on a Thursday, so most of us don't get to go to a special service that day. But what's the significance of Jesus' ascension? Why think about it today? The Bible doesn't spend a lot of time describing the event, but we do have the few verses that Hannah read. Acts 1.9 says, When Jesus had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. The Bible always talks about heaven being up, perhaps indicating somewhere good, somewhere better, but it doesn't locate it in outer space. What our verse in Acts 1 describes is some vertical movement. He was taken up. He didn't kind of fly away. It was the action of God to to lift him up and take him up. It says a cloud envelops Jesus. I don't believe that was a cloud of cumulus or cirrus. But I believe that was the Shekinah glory, the cloud of God's presence that envelops Jesus and he passes into the heavenly realm. And heaven isn't a location within our universe situated somewhere up in the sky. It's a sphere of reality. Heaven's basically God's dimension and earth is our dimension. They're two interlocking spheres of reality that in many ways were separated at the fall but Jesus is going to reunite them in the fullness of time. And Jesus' resurrected body is the first thing that was fully at home in both, in heaven and on earth. And he dwelt in both between resurrection and ascension. Then from his ascension, Jesus passes fully into the God sphere of reality, the heavenly realm. And Jesus will remain at home there until he comes again. In the future, heaven and earth are renewed and reunited and Jesus will be the central figure. Moving on in our passage, Acts 1, verse 10. They, that's the disciples, were looking intently into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand looking into the sky? This same Jesus who's been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go. As they gaze upward, two men dressed in white, presumably the same two angels at Jesus' tomb after the resurrection, appear. And the disciples are told, stop gazing upwards. They're reassured concerning Jesus' future return. And they will have work to do in the meantime. And as we read the first chapters of Acts, their task of mission becomes clear. So why is the ascension significant for their ministry and for ours? Well, Jesus' position has changed. He's moved from living alongside the disciples to a place of supreme authority in the heavenly realm. What implications does that have? I want to look at three briefly now under the headings of compassion, confidence and commission. Firstly, the letters of the Hebrews talks about Jesus, the great high priest in Hebrews 4, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who's ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to feel sympathy for our weaknesses, but we have one who's been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Jesus is in the supreme position of authority. He's the appointed judge of all humankind. And it's so reassuring to us that he's experienced human life 
He understands and sympathises with our weaknesses and temptations. And we approach a God who will judge us with compassion. When we feel down, I know I do, when we feel despondent, when we feel we're failures, we can approach him. He gives us mercy and grace and the power to overcome temptations. When we feel like giving up, we can look to Jesus and press on. If at this time you're feeling down, you're feeling your aloneness, you're feeling depressed, or you feel like giving up, come to Jesus, your great high priest, ascended into glory. Secondly, and I think this is the point uh, God wants me to most emphasise this morning. Secondly, we can have enormous confidence in prayer. We've just read Hebrews 4.16. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. Hebrews 1 and other verses in the Bible say something like this. Hebrews 1. After he provided purification for sins, Jesus sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And this sitting down at the right hand signifies Jesus being in a position to exercise authority. And we appeal to Jesus in that position. In myself, probably like you, I don't feel power or significance or the ability to achieve very much. Usually I can see all the problems around me and I can be overwhelmed by them. And I easily feel pretty helpless. I try and work out what I could do but it doesn't amount to very much. But this tells me I can have a new perspective in life. I can approach the throne of God's grace. I can appeal to the ascended Lord Jesus in prayer. One situation some of you know about is concerning our friend Steve working in Turkey, and uh, he's been at our fellowship, hasn't he? And a uh, very fit man, marathon runner, eats well. Uh, but he was out there and his wife has been here. And then lockdown happened and they were stuck. And then two weeks ago, he had a stroke, completely out of the blue, completely unexpected. And he's there on his own, had a stroke. Uh, communication's hard. People can't travel. There's a two-week quarantine into that nation. What a difficult situation but he was discovered in time. But his friends and fellow people in, in fellowship started to pray and saw the enormity of the situation and the difficulty of the situation. But I believe prayed to the ascended Lord Jesus with growing confidence. And in the last two weeks, he's come round. He's recovered much more health. Loads of red tape has been cut through. Money's been raised and he's been flown back here. And that's a, a difficult story. His, his health needs ongoing help. But what a breakthrough we've seen. And what an encouragement to pray to the ascended Lord Jesus with confidence as he's seated at God's right hand. Let's be encouraged in our prayers and take the opportunity of thy kingdom come starting on Thursday to pray. And thirdly and finally, our commission. We're commissioned by God. We're on a co-mission with Jesus. We've got a job to do. As we read the book of Acts, we see Jesus' followers praying and playing their part in bringing in God's kingdom by what they say and what they do. And that's ongoing. Matthew 24, 14 says, The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. It's great being a fellowship at, at church, but we want to make Jesus known to those around us uh, at work, even if you're working from home, to your work colleagues, in our families, to our neighbours. Maybe you've rediscovered your neighbours again and seen them over the garden fence. Hopefully we've had the opportunity to interact with them more in the last couple of months. And this is a good time to do it. There seems to be more interest in prayer and spirituality People are praying, they're watching stuff online. We can't guarantee that watching a service online will lead people to finding faith and joining a church. But in some cases, that's already happened. And I believe it will do more. Billy Kennedy, I think, uh, from Pioneer Network said, 
It's a bit like internet dating. If people look online and see something they like, then they might join in person. And I hope that happens. I hope people like us and other churches online and swipe the right way and connect physically in the future. I also loved Paulette and Patience's video. It's great to see two friends interacting. I think there's some lessons to be learned there. It's been a 25 year relationship. Sometimes sharing our faith over time and over the long time is important. I like Paulette's patience. Then there's God's timing. I believe Paulette gave the invitation to Alpha just at the right time. I look forward to the time when we can invite people into Here for Good for Alpha again. We've been thinking about Conrad with his sister's funeral and his birthday next week. How come he's at Forest Hill Community Church? Well, the answer is, 24 years ago, his next door neighbour where he used to live invited him to our Alpha course. It was the first Alpha course we ever ran and it's where he found faith. So let's be renewed in our mission. Let's think about the compassion of God as we approach him. Let's pray with confidence that God's going to move because Jesus is ascended to a place of authority. And let's go for it in mission, the great commission that is on our lives from Jesus. We need to be renewed in that, don't we? And the crucial thing is being empowered by God's spirit to do that. I can't do it in my own strength. I need the life and spirit of God. Acts 2.33 says, Exalted to the right hand of God, Jesus has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. He's in that position of authority. He's poured out the Spirit to give us the power and energy for mission. And we need that. We'll think more about that in a fortnight's time at Pentecost. Thank you.